ADRA rescues six people in Turkey and provides immediate relief to earthquake victims in Syria and Turkey. Visiting Zambia, Adventist President Pastor Ted Wilson meets Hakande Hichalema, country president and member of the denomination. Women finds meaning in helping people in the Amazon rainforest. These and other stories of faith, love, and hope are coming up here and now on ANN. Immediately after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck southern Turkey and northwest Syria on February 6, the humanitarian agency ADRA went to the scene of the tragedy to provide emergency assistance and assess future aid. After more than 10 days, over 37,000 people have died and tens of thousands are injured. Mario Oliveira, director of emergency for ADRA International, remembered, before the disaster happened, we were already in the region and have been for a long time, both in Syria and in the past also in Turkey. Since the day of the disaster, ADRA has been distributing food, water, clothing, and essential supplies. They have also helped shelter displaced families and implemented water, sanitation, and hygiene projects. The humanitarian organization is working in collaboration with the Adventist Church, local government leaders, and trusted partners to ensure that aid and resources reach the affected communities. Pastors, denomination officials, and other volunteer members are also working to serve the population. The ADRA rescue team has worked in the ruins and successfully rescued six people, including two children, in Hatay, Turkey. They reported, we are facing very difficult situations. It took us 14 hours to save a lady who was found by our team. It was very difficult to get her out. We worked with the Turkish fire brigade, but finally we found out a solution and got her out. ADRA will continue to escalate emergency response operations to deliver relief to victims. Visit ADRA.org to learn more about ADRA's disaster relief efforts in Turkey, Syria, and how you can support ADRA's global humanitarian mission. Für die Helfer. Por los doctores. Por les représentants gouvernementaux. For all humanitarian aid organizations. Za tiech, kto potieral svojich ľubimých. Za one, ktorí se bore za svoj život. Per aqueles que ainda estão a lutar pelas suas vidas. Per ognuno di loro, preghiamo. Bis sliročin sim četaos. Estamos orando por vosotros. Tu ar ikke alene. Du bist nicht allein. Non siete soli. Vous n'êtes pas tout seul. Te ette ole yksi. Apokelenei. Vy ni jedni. On a visit to the southern part of the African continent, Pastor Ted Wilson, president of the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church, met with Hakande Hichilema, the president of Zambia, who also is a member of the denomination. It was indeed a great day today as the General Conference President Elder Ted Wilson with his wife Nancy accompanied by the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division President Dr. Harrington Simuya Kombwa, his wife, the SID and the union leaders paid a courteous call on His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Hakainde Hichilima at State House in Lusaga, Zambia. Arriving at State House, the Elder Wilson was whisked away into the boardroom with government ministers and the SID and union leaders. 
Among the leaders was Elder Gideon Renege, the Executive Secretary of SID, Elder Hopkins Ngomba, the Chief Financial Officer, Dr. Hobson Bonya, the Vice President, and Dr. Pasmo Mlambo, the Ministerial Director. The two Zambian Union presidents were also present, namely Dr. Tommy Namitondo from North Zambia Union Conference and Dr. Vanim Nyumbwa from the Southern Zambia Union Conference, the host union. The GC president was then joined by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, who was equally delighted to meet him. Elder Wilson expressed his gratitude about the work being done by the Zambian president, especially the religious liberty aspect, where the people are free to worship and express themselves in Zambia. Reciprocating Elder Wilson's message, the state president, who is also an Adventist and a master guide himself, thanked Elder Wilson for the courtesy visit and reiterated that Zambia is a Christian nation which has since abolished the death penalty as they respect life and that all denominations in the country are free to worship God. He further thanked the Seventh Adventist Church for the wonderful work they are doing, especially in the field of education. President Hichilima said, education is indeed an equalizer in transforming people's lives. Elder Wilson then shared some scriptures from the Bible before he prayed for the state president and his ministers. He also gave His Excellency a special pen as a gift. The delegation was given an opportunity for a photo shoot outside with His Excellency. During the interview, the state president said he would be delighted to join the World Church President as we congregate at Hero Stadium this coming Sabbath. This is a really a wonderful, yeah, wonderful occasion to get a visitation from the, our global president and also regional president, our local leaders in the country, two unions and others. It's wonderful. And also, I, I believe my cabinet colleagues, state house colleagues, other uh, government officials are very delighted that we have this meeting. And this is what we encourage uh, with this church, with other churches. Um, this is the way it should be, really. We're very delighted. As for Elder Wilson, he said he was extremely happy to have met the country president, a brother in Christ. I have to tell you, I felt very much at home. Uh, because here in Zambia they know how to give a good reception, they know how to make you feel welcome, and we have felt that way ever since arriving in Lusaka on Friday. But uh, His Excellency President uh, Ichilema has put us at ease with the understanding of how the government is proceeding to help all the people of Zambia to lift them in financial ways, but in moral and spiritual ways, in ways that will help them through education, through health services, and many other ways. And this really comes from a Christian viewpoint. And there are many Christians here in Zambia. It is a Christian nation. Uh, there are others, other beliefs as well. And all beliefs should be uh, respected and given religious liberty. That is a wonderful foundation of this country of Zambia. But I have to tell you, meeting with the president, who is not only His Excellency the President, he is our brother in Jesus Christ, a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It was a special honor and privilege, and I praise God for that. So ended the visit to the State House of Elder Wilson and his delegation on a high note. For the Adventist News Network, this is North Spanda reporting from State House in Lusaka, Zambia. After the break, we will continue with the inspiring story of the beginnings of ASI. Grateful people take better care of themselves. 
Researchers found that study participants who kept a weekly gratitude journal exercised 1.5 hours more than the group who recorded daily hassles. In another study with adults having congenital and adult onset neuromuscular disorders, participants who jotted down their blessings nightly reported more hours of sleep each night, falling asleep faster and feeling more refreshed upon awakening. That's a fact. But there's hope. Each of us has a list of health habits that could use improvement. This week, enhance your lifestyle by spending a few quiet moments each day counting your blessings. After all, positive behaviors are driven by a positive attitude. One of the things that I like to do here in Washington, D.C. is on Valentine's Day to go down to Union Station and give long stem roses to the bag ladies, to the beggars. Ah, oh, for as often as you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the Word of God and prayer. Have you ever wondered if there was more to life? Do you have big questions with hard to find answers? The Discover Bible Guides are Hope Channel's free gift to you. These 26 beautifully illustrated guides cover major themes of the Bible and answer some of life's deepest questions. Visit HopeBibleStudy.org or call 888-446-7388 and begin your journey to discovery today. Continuing our series on ASI pioneers of the Adventist Layman Services and Industries, we head to Savannah, Tennessee, where we'll learn about a place allowing young people to combine work and evangelism in a very special way. Madison College was established in 1904 under the direction and instruction of Ellen White. God directed them to a piece of property there that they really didn't even want to have because it was rocky and the fences were broken down, and the equipment was rusty. Somehow, God has this sense of humor. He takes the things that look like they can be used for nothing, and He makes something out of them. And I think that's what He wanted to do at Madison, because He wanted to show, if you can do mission work here, you can do it anywhere. It was not beautiful when they went there, but it was beautiful because of what it produced. Young people who knew how to go out and earn a living with their own hands and share the gospel at the same time. At Madison College, one of the things that was evident from the beginning is that they had to earn their own way. They sold eggs. They milked the cows and made butter. They farmed the land and whatever they had that they had grown, that's what they ate because they knew it had to be self-sustaining. If they were gonna teach self-supporting, they had to do self-supporting. It was the template for the program that the self-supporting institutions, including Harvard Hills, have adopted. At Harvard Hills Academy, the institution has several major components. We have the educational work, and the educational work, we believe, should include practical hands-on training. Therefore, the industries that we also have. Harvard Hills Academy owns a 49-bed nursing home. That 49-bed nursing home is a fully licensed and accredited facility in the state of Tennessee to provide care 
for senior citizens who need more care than they can receive at home. And outside of the nursing home, we have Harvard Hill Bread of Life Bakery, where we bake breads and cookies for both the school and the nursing home, and students are involved in that work. And then we have a pretty extensive agriculture program. Uh, we're building greenhouses as we speak and, and growing vegetables year-round. And so students are involved in all of these industries that we have on school. These are the ministries that help support the school. We also have a radio station on campus. It's really an outreach to our community, but it's also a training tool to help young people. In addition to the practical training through the industries, we have vocational classes in auto mechanics, and woodworking, and digital photography, and medical missionary, and food service teaching them these vital skills that they need for everyday life. It's an opportunity for young people to learn how to serve other people, how to be responsible, how to be punctual, how to be dependable, how to be good at their job, and how to be a service to mankind. I grew up in a public sector where it's all academic. I did not have a problem with getting A, man, book work easy, but when I went to college and I had to apply that to other things I could not do. It was hard for me because that practical application was missing. Here at Harvard Hills, we teach the practical application along with the academic, how it can reach one so your mind can reach the highest standard. So our goal is that our students, whether they go in the mission field or whether they continue on to higher education, is that they will be rooted and grounded and close enough to the Lord that they will be able to sustain and survive. And this school is equipping them that whichever direction, based on their passion of what they would like to do, when God called them, they are fit with the tool. The Spirit of Prophecy talks about an army of young people who have been rightly trained. If we're ever going to have an army of young people rightly trained, we're going to have to have institutions that are training rightly. Not only are we training students stateside, to go out and spread this message and uh, carry it along with them. But now we're sending students all over the world. Uh, we have students here from uh, probably 16 different countries. I believe that God has a plan for the work of education around the world. And it is to establish schools like Harvard Hills Academy in every country of the world. It's time for us to take a short break. When we return, we'll hear the story of Kunsei and Sao, a woman who found meaning in life by helping and caring for people in the Amazon rainforest. A recent study by the National Sleep Foundation found that playing video games, checking emails and text messages, or watching television at night may be depriving us from getting enough sleep. Nearly 95% of people questioned in the study said they used some type of electronics in the hour before going to bed, and about two-thirds admitted they do not get enough sleep during the week. Exposure to artificial light before going to bed can increase alertness and suppress the release of melatonin, a sleep-promoting hormone. That's a fact. But there's hope. You can make a big, positive impact on sleep, mood, health, relationships, stress management, work productivity, and academic performance by making a small change in electronic use before bed. So, switch your device for a book at least a few evenings a week and have a better night's sleep. cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. What's your focus? 
Are you in the habit of negativity, despair, and even self-pity? Our brains reshape themselves according to what we think, feel, and expect. I'm Vicki Griffin, host of Living Free. Join me for Your Internal Environment, an episode that will give you a new perspective. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the Word of God and prayer. As Kunzen Sao sought purpose and meaning in life, she felt hopeless and believed she lacked a special gift or talent. However, she soon discovered a love for helping and caring for people in the Amazon rainforest. Today, Kunzen Sao feels fulfilled as she follows God's calling for her life. My name is Conceição, and I'm a doctor from Belém in the state of Pará in Brazil. I work for the public health care system and for a private clinic. I've never intended to study medicine, to make money, to live a fancy life or to live in a prettier world. Ever since I was a child, I dream of studying medicine to treat lives, to take care of people. I was always wondering about my gift, saying, Lord, what gift do I have? I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to do anything of the sort. So really, I must have no gifts. But when I stepped into the Luzero mission boat, I understood what my gift was and the purpose I sought my whole life. Dr. Conceição was the first volunteer doctor to join the 29th Luzero boat. By accepting this volunteer opportunity, she found the purpose she had been looking for. They gathered donations during Christmas to be delivered by the mission boat. They brought food and clothes. And when we docked the boat, I was impressed by the number of people who were there waiting for us. That was my first experience with Luzero and Adra. I was amazed when I left. I felt like I had been charged with good energy. You know, I felt fulfilled. Since then, Dr. Conceição boards the 29th Luzero boat to relieve the pain and illness that affect villagers along the river. All of them were suffering from mainly from parasitosis, as well as other diseases they couldn't get treatment for because there wasn't a place for them to go for that. We've also found people who suffer from psychological illnesses, people who are depressed, people who do not live well, people who are always anxious and need a more welcoming approach. Today, Manuel had a quick health checkup, and the arrival of the Luzero boat has benefited him on several occasions. This has been very good. I just learned that my blood pressure is steady, and the doctor just checked in on me to see how I was doing. And the best part is that it's all for free, you know? Thankfully, my health is doing great. It is good to know that I'm okay. We feel that they are putting their heart into their work. We feel their soul in their work. They do an amazing job. Caring for people allows doctors and missionaries such as Kon Sisao to talk to people on a deep level. It's very hard to reach a patient in pain that hasn't received any medication. I've encountered patients who would say, how can God exist if I'm suffering this much? But when you go there and minister to the sick, treating their illnesses, then you can talk about God's love, and they understand that very well.
for Konsasau. It's not easy to be here. She struggles to get across the ramp or down the stairs, and all too often, her workload is heavy. I have a hip to knee prosthetic implant, which makes many things impossible for me, you know? It limits me. I never thought I would be able to go from the dock to the boat. Sometimes it's very hard, but being here, it's worth it. Here's a fun fact about the doctor. Every day I ask her, Doctor, how many appointments this morning? She'll reply, Eduardo, you can schedule 24 to 25 appointments. Then I go and schedule the appointments as people arrive. At night, she'll ask me how many she covered. And I respond, Doctor, you actually covered over 42 appointments. Her mobility doesn't prevent her from doing good to anyone. And besides serving people, she always donates the free samples of medicine she receives from the labs. She is an incredibly warm person, always helping us, no matter the circumstances. Sometimes people say to me, I like you so much, you are already older, but you managed to come here. Then they say the most beautiful thing, I'm going to pray for you. Konsasau fulfilled her dream of being a doctor and finding her gift. For her, the Luzero Project represents God's plan for her. Adra is part of my life. Whenever I come to Luzero, whenever I'm able to assist lots of people, I leave this boat renewed. I never think that I am doing much for these people, but I feel God has blessed me very much through them as I can put in practice all I have in my heart. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Matthew chapter 24, verses 7, 8, 13, and 14. It says, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.